Hello and welcome to another training video by LSpec. Today's video is part one of a two-part series covering the Overview tab in PQ SCADA Sapphire. The Overview tab is the far left one at the top of your window and if you look at it you either have a blank map or you may actually have some meters already on your map. So what we're going to go over in this video is how to add meters to your map, how to configure them on here, uh, what good it does you, what you can see, uh, what you're looking for. Okay. So the easiest way to add a map is to zoom in to where you want to add the map, to add the meter. In this case, I'm going to zoom in here to Knoxville. Configure the map. Grab it. In this case, it's our new DF4. And just drop it. Just put it wherever you want to. Um, this map has street level resolution, so you can zoom all the way into a street, or you can just get it close and just drop it in, into the map. Um, save your changes. Now it is part of your map. Okay. To remove it, you go over here to the side panel as well. Right click on the meter, remove component from map. Okay, so that's over here, configure map, high configurations. The more correct way to do this, or the more accurate way, is to go to your systems tab and select your meter and go to the general tab and here's your latitude and your longitude coordinates. Um, if you have the street address but you don't have the coordinates, there are several websites you can go to that will convert your address to coordinates and vice versa. In this case, I'm using a national landmark, which is Niagara Falls, uh, because its coordinates are pretty well known. So I've entered my coordinates and I hit save. Back over to the overview tab and now the DFR is showing up right here in New York, Niagara Falls. Okay. So now that we can understand how to add and remove meters to the map, what's the point, you know, what can we do with them while they're here? Well, this hides it so you just have your GPS pin. Double click back on it and it pulls back up your heads up display. This shows a chart, so I can click on my active power, show chart, and it gives me a little um, real-time graph of the active power at that facility. Okay. And then parameters tells what parameters we have in our little heads-up display. So you can click on that. Um, you can remove a parameter. You can add parameters. We'll go ahead and add frequency. Um, 10 second resolution apply um, it takes it uh, a couple of seconds to show up and now I have my frequency and here's my frequency graph okay this tells us that our power quality status is okay and that is based off of your compliance tab under your power quality tab what are you looking at? Are you looking at EN5160? Are you looking at IEEE 519? Which of the built-in compliances are you looking at? Um, if there is a problem, as you can see over here, it's red. That means that there has been a compliance violation. Okay. This is your communication. I'll let you know everything is good with the meter. And that it's recording data. And this, when you click on it, opens the device website so you can actually log in and program or make changes to your device via a web browser um, if it is you know supports it and it's online and everything which it should be okay so that is our heads-up display and everything here if you have a crowded screen of multiple meters, here is how you can split it. Split the screen vertically. 
So over here, I'm going to go look at the meters I've got on the other side of the world. Okay. And when you're done, you just X off the other screen. So that gives you an idea to kind of display your work, your workspace. Here you can pop it out and create a floating window in case you want to drag it over to another monitor. Um, information like that. Configure the map, like we said. This shows you how you can pull stuff in or out. You can also right-click over here, not only remove uh, the component, you can also add remove parameters from here instead of doing it from this device here. And finally, we have our little widgets over here on the right-hand side. Power quality, fault recorder, and system. We said we have in our LSPIC North America, we have a power quality violation. It's IEEE 519. So if I click on this, it takes me over to my power quality tab and we'll pull up uh, the graph of that report. Okay. While it's doing that, we'll go back and, and look at some of the others. So we've got 519, we've got EN 5160, which is a, a European standard, um, generic, stuff like that. Whatever you have programmed on your tab will show up as a power quality issue here. So over here on our power quality tab, and here we have it where it's loaded, IEEE 519, you can see lots of violations. Uh, but that is because this meter is sitting in a lab in a building that's not doing anything right now. So it's not actually in the field. And then a generic one that was created and put on here. Um, so this gives you an idea of, you know, what you're looking at here for your compliances. Fault recorder is exactly what it says it is. There was a fault, inrush current, a lot of inrush current, THD faults. Um, so let's click on an inrush current one. This takes you directly over to your investigation panel and shows you the the event. In this case, you got 60 amps, went up to 180, um, 192 amps. So from here, you can, as we've shown in other videos, add different parameters to this and get you a really nice report and a graph out of it. And then finally down here, system, you know, failed to connect, failed to read data, failed to read data, failed to connect. These are just informations for you to say, hey, I've had some problems. I might need to go look at this and see what's going on. Okay. So that is the map section of the overview tab. Um, in the part two video, we'll go over the, um, the listings and also how to upload um, diagrams for facilities, for building facilities, and add parameters to it that way. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and connect with us on LinkedIn. Have a great day.